You ready to go? Are you ready, William? I'm ready. All Is everyone right. ready? You guys ready? Awesome. So leveraging explained data. Let's kick it off. William, let's kick it off with you. Okay, let's do it. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we're going to be here talking about leveraging explained data. Um, myself, my name is William Watkins. I'm a product consultant out of our DC office. And when I'm not working at Tableau, I like to work in Tableau. I like to think of myself as a data explorer. I do a lot of visualization builds. Um, in this case, building you know things that I care about around Michigan football. Uh, go blue. Uh, we got Great Lakes. Um, in this case, shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. Random map things. I just love doing that. And when I'm not doing this in my free time, I like to be out in wilderness exploring. Picture me in the, the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. And this was from a road trip a few years ago. And of course, there's a visualization for that too. When I'm not out in the woods, I like to be on the water. Lifelong sailor. Was a sailing instructor for eight years. And uh, absolutely love it. But I'm so happy to be here with you and here with Nick. Nick, yeah. how about you? All right. Thank you, William. So, like William said, my name is Nick Beaton. I'm a sales consultant here with Tableau, and I help some of our largest customers with their enterprise Tableau solutions. Uh, and also, like William, I enjoy the great outdoors. Uh, this is me in the North Cascades, uh, just north of Washington, or, or Seattle, Washington, uh, exploring the outdoors. And also, like William, uh, when I'm outside, I like to teach other folks uh, here's me instructing people how to climb rocks, go outside and do outdoor rock <laughs> climbing. Um, and I actually picked up an interesting hobby. Oh yeah, Nick? Yeah. What was that? So when I'm outside of climbing rocks and I learned a lot about rocks, uh, you know, w one of these days I saw a little gold speck in one of the rivers. And I actually started gold panning, p panning for gold, looking for gold uh, in How's rivers How's it been? You been, been in any success there? I had a little bit of success. I actually have some gold in my bag I can show you all later. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to see, come up, ask some Q&A, and I'll show, you, I'll show you some gold I pulled out of the rivers. <laughs> um, but William, do you know anything about gold mining and I don't. gold? Well, I mean, personally, I don't. But when I always go home to Detroit, uh, my grandma always tells me stories of genealogy. And she always tells me about this one ancestor. His name was Richard O'Neill. They lived in uh, upstate New York. And he moved out west to twice, actually, to go in search for silver and gold. Um, I think he was successful at least one time. I, don't, I think he ended up being like stuck in Montana eventually. Do you know anything about how Montana is for gold, Nick? Well, actually, yes. There's a viz for that that I put together. Would Let's you all like it. to see it? Yeah, woo! Let's see it. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to hop into Tableau Desktop here and bring up this visualization that shows gold mining production in the United States. Looks like there's a little in Montana. There's a little bit in Montana, but you'll see that Nevada actually is the largest producing state in the country. Huh. Lots of these counties here in the dark blue uh, have uh, large gold mining operations where there's uh, large output. So as you'll see, there was, there's an interesting outlier in this data when we look at the timeline going across the top. Uh, we can see a dip in production. Now, there's this new feature, Explain Data. Why we're all here. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and explore what could have caused that dip in 2012. When I highlight over top of one of these data points, we're familiar with this dialog box. But there's a new feature here. It's a little light bulb. I'm going to go ahead and select that feature. And we get a dialog box here uh, that gives us a couple explanations on why gold production uh, is lower in that particular year. We can see that the average quantity is a, is, is a bit lower than, than expected. Well, yeah, you know, that's kind of what we thought, right? So that's an expected insight, lower than expected gold mining. But there's a different result. And we can see that Explain Data was expecting a larger output for Nevada in that particular year, but the output was below expected. So something was going on in Nevada that year. Exactly, something was happening in Nevada. Okay. So do we know if, you know, if it was weather, or if it was regulations, what was going on there? It could have been any number of these things, which brings us up to an important topic for Explain Data. You're going to need to have the data inside of your data sets. If you don't have that data available, 
explain data is not going to be able to predict uh, you know, the effect that it has on your gold output or whatever other metric you're interested in analyzing. Well, either way, it looks like it was a good year for Montana. I think Richard O'Neill might have been a few, maybe 130 years too early. Yeah. All right. So let's hop back into our PowerPoint. So this entire presentation is not all about mining for gold. There's, there's some other <laughs> nuggets of information that you'll be getting out of today. And you're probably wondering, is this session right for you? Well, do you have interesting data points in your business data that you're analyzing? Things that are outliers or unexpected values that you'd like to explore? If so, this session is right for you. What about wide, complicated data sets? Data sets that you'd like to sift through and analyze. Data sets uh, with many records, maybe millions of records and, and many columns to analyze. If that's the case, then this session would be right for you as well. Or what about just analyzing your data quicker and uncovering results and information inside of your data sets? If that's something you're looking for, then this session is right for yeah, you as well. It really seems like this session is for almost everybody. Yeah, you know, if you, if you have Tableau and, and <laughs> interested in data, Explain Data is going to be right for you. Explain Data allows you to leverage powerful machine learning algorithms to get to the what behind the why, to understand what could be causing gold output to be lower than expected in 2012, or any of the number, or any of the drivers behind uh, the va unexpected values you see in your data. Letting you find some nuggets of information that you may not have known existed. So you're probably wondering, can I use Explain Data? And who has access in my organization to use Explain Data? Well, it's going to be available to anyone on Tableau server who is a creator or an explorer. Also, any Tableau desktop user will have access to Explain Data. But remember, it's available in version 2019.3. So if you're not upgraded in your desktop, you can go to the website and download the latest. Uh, or if you need to have your server admin upgrade, it's, it's easy to do. Just encourage them to go to 2019.3 and beyond. So, out of today's session, we're hoping for you to get a deeper understanding of how to leverage explain data in your business and for your use cases. And we're going to do this by discussing some practical applications for explain data, showing you real world data and solutions uh, that may match the use cases inside of your business. And along the way, we'll be discussing tips and tricks that you can incorporate, uh, that you can incorporate into your analytics flow. Perfect. So thanks, Nick. So as you guys now know, this is something that can be used in desktop and server as an explorer and creator. We really want to understand how do we make sure we get the most out of this new feature. And we want to understand that power. So as Nick mentioned briefly, explain data helps get from what to why. Typically, Tableau is going to be that descriptive analytics, really showing you exactly where your business stands. But it's, while you can get to what makes up certain marks and figure out exactly what is going to be happening in your data set, it goes through that process of dragging and dropping. And sometimes it can be time consuming. So, and bring in additional biases. So what explained data helps do is brings forward relevant information to your analysis. It's going to be comparing a mark that you selected and its data to all other pieces of data within your data set. Also, it's something that you can trust because it is actually using statistical modeling to actually show what is significant in the data set rather than just that drag and drop process. And lastly, it's engaging. So it's going to encourage you to continue to ask that next level question. Just like you normally do in Tableau, that drag and drop experience that we're used to, we can also go further, further faster with this tool, build Tableau visualizations, and then take them that next step further. So with that, I'm going to go through a little demo and we're going to talk about the workflow in Tableau currently and compare that to the workflow using explained data. We're looking at high school grade distribution data. 
This data pulls in information that, about who these students are, their demographics, some survey responses, and then their actual grades. You can see that this visualization, we have uh, most students in the middle, some up top, and then some that are struggling. So acceleration needed to struggling. If I were to go through this process to try to figure out why students might be struggling, I can do this a couple different ways in Tableau now. One thing that I might do is create a set, and these might be of my struggling students. The reason why I do that is because that helps me isolate, and I can use that set in many different places to change my analysis. I may want to keep my original visualization so I can duplicate this, and then filter down to just my struggling students. While this isn't the best visualization, we can change this up too. We can look at the values on our left, our dimensional values, to understand what makes up this population of students. Looking at alcohol consumption, we can see that on this scale from one to five, we have a lot of students who are on the one, so on that lower end. We can continue to ask our questions, change this, and explore our data really quickly. But we go through a lot of processes that are time consuming, and our bias on what questions we want to ask is going to be pulled into this. So as I go into something like maybe study time, something that you would think would have a big effect on a you know, student's performance, we can see this here. But maybe we want to actually change this up to make a comparison across this population and the rest. I can take off my filter and then use my set maybe as a color to make a comparison here. Change my visuals, change how I'm uh, stacking these to make this comparison a little more clear, and maybe even add this to size so we're calling this out a little differently. We see the distribution in total numbers varies quite a bit, but we're comparing two different population sizes. So we may need to normalize this to understand what's going on across these groups. We can go in, use quick table calculations to do a percent of total to normalize. May need to understand this a little bit further with how they're computed and go in and do it across study time to actually change uh, to see that this is the percentage of the in and out group that we've selected. In this case, we can find that students that study less than two hours a week are not performing as high as the rest of the population. The struggling is that blue, the gray is the rest, and we're seeing that the distribution for all other students that are performing better, they're studying more typically. So I hope you noticed through that exercise how many clicks and things that I needed to know it took. I use sets, I use table calculations, things that you may need to know a little bit more about Tableau to get to this same conclusion and know where you're going. Again, that process, that journey is something that has always been valuable in Tableau, but now we can get there faster and again, trust the insight that we find. So if I rewind this and we go back to our original visualization, just like Nick has shown, we can come in to these struggling students, look at our tooltip, we see this little light bulb for all those insights, we make that selection, and Tableau is now going to trigger a bunch of queries to actually compare this population to the rest of the population. Call out specific features, uh, whether it is extreme values or different averages, um, to, or the distribution itself, to really understand what is going on and how this data set, how this struggling student's group compares to the rest of the, um, in this case, student body. So one thing that we see is that going out with friends also has a different distribution for these struggling students than it does for the general population. So William, does this mean that our struggling students go out with their friends more? Exactly. Okay. So this is a survey response from one to five, five being most likely, one being least likely. It's good to note that. And we're actually going to talk on making this data consumable so that you, when you go through this, you, go through, you understand exactly what this is showing and why that is going to be beneficial for all those end users who may be using this data as well. As we go forward, we get additional explanations around age being a factor. As a you know, potential teacher, there may be a couple of reasons why this might be. Maybe this is because students are being held back. There are certain like, repeat offenders who are struggling. And typically, that would be that eight older age group. 
Now, if I am, you know, have domain expertise or subject matter expertise, I might know that. But maybe adding in additional data to make sure that that point is clear is something that is going to be valuable to you and your end users. Other things like mother's job. In this case, significant, but we also have something like other. It's hard to fully know what's going on there. And lastly, what we saw before, study time. Now again, thinking about domain expertise or just knowledge around the data as an analyst, we can actually think about these in a couple different ways. Two things that are really important are very time consuming, going out with friends and study. Maybe we can take this the next step further to understand what's going on. And this is where your knowledge of the data is going to be vital to understanding what the output of explained data is. It will only show these things that are statistically significant, and then you are the ones who have to actually take action on those. So what we can do is continue to ask questions by clicking this little button right here, open as a new worksheet, and explain data is going to build a Tableau visualization for us. When we do that selection, it'll also create a set down here of selected marks and also look at that number of records for that selected group. And that's going to be that table calculation that we're looking at. That simple click, it's not only accessed and looked at what the, um, the actual insights are across our models, but also the ability to find out, you know, go further and build these complex things within Tableau. And from here, we can interact with this just like a normal Tableau viz. So if I want to look at those two things that are time consuming, such as going out with friends and study time, I can throw that on the viz as well. And I can find something interesting that our students that are studying less than two hours, they are, and going out with friends at a very high rate, they make up 27% of that population. And maybe this is something as a teacher that we can target. Maybe there's something that we can do to help these students actually learn more about time management and try to help them figure out if they're still going to go out with their friends, how they can also study more effectively. So with that, hopefully you get the point that explain data isn't going to just throw all these golden nuggets out for you. It'll actually give you insights that still take action. And you still need to dive deeper and know your data to really understand exactly what's going on. So it's going to give you explanations, but you need to really find those true golden nuggets of insight. So Nick, I'll pass it back to you. Hey, great demo. To show man. how does it work. Yeah. Wrong one. Let's go. I wish uh, I wish I would have had explained data to my parents. Maybe they would have made me study more and not go out <laughs> as much. So we saw the power that's available and the statistical models uh, that are being run in the background. Now let's discuss how this all works. So as you know, Tableau aggregates data and displays those data as marks in a visualization. When you select a particular mark on the screen, uh, explain data is going to, a Tableau is going to have the dialog box with explain data available. When we look at this mark, we have a, uh, it's going to be aggregating a customer named Seth and displaying the results for that customer. So the first thing that explain data is going to do uh, is predict the value of this customer Seth uh, based on the data that's available in the visualization. So we're not bringing in any of the other dimensions into the, visual, in, into the analysis at first. We're just going to be looking at, in this example, uh, all of our customers and their sales and profit, and we're going to use that information to predict the value of Seth. Next up, we bring in those other dimensions. So we're going to use all of the fields in the data set to build a model of what a customer like Seth would have purchased or their sales and profit values. So we're bringing in information maybe about what other customers purchase, uh, maybe uh, the products that they selected, and, and any of the other fields that are available. So we're going to create a profile of Seth, not using that original profit and sales value, to understand what would the distribution have looked like. Then we're going to map that distribution in the background, as you can see the gray bars, and where Seth's values have fit in there. As you can see, we would have expected Seth to make purchases across the country, 
uh, based on his, his profile of the data, but this customer, Seth, only purchased in the East. It's not what we would have expected. No. All right. So, there's going to be a number of models that are ran and scores placed for each of the models. And these scores are going to be ranked from good, better to best, right? Uh, so the top, uh, the, the top ex explanation in this explain data dialog screen is going to be the explanation with the highest score. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most appropriate explanation, as we saw, you know, students who go out, who, who spend, or as we saw earlier, uh, with gold mining production, uh, if gold mining production's down, that could just be an explanation, right? But we, we used our other dimensions to figure out it was the state of Nevada that's influencing it. So let's discuss some of these different models that can uh, be ran on explain, with explained data. Um, one of the first is going to be uh, scoring extreme values. So as we discussed, Tableau aggregates data and displays those data as marks in a visualization. Each of those marks can be made up of several different data points or records, right? So maybe there is a record in that customer's history that is an outlier or an extreme value, right? So in this ex example here, we can see that this customer made a purchase for $17,000. That's much higher than their historical purchase. And these, these uh, outliers are going to be essentially a normal distribution, and if that individual purchase or record falls outside of that normal distribution, then it's going to be flagged as an extreme value. And then, if you eliminate that record, and the mark falls much more within a normal distribution of the data, so you can see here this explanation says by removing that one record, uh, the value went from 76,000 to 26. So explained data shows you what it, what it looks like without that record in the data set. And if it makes a significant difference, then the score for extreme value is much higher. So this is really helping you with outlier detection and trying to figure out how a single aggregation could be impacted by a, a single value or row. Exactly. Wow. Right? Is there a high or unexpected or unusual record uh, underneath that mark that you're exploring. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit more about some of these unexpected values for marks. And one of these could be uh, a high number of records. So when we're doing a, an, a sum aggregation, when we're summing values, uh, there may be a high number of records for an individual uh, field that's driving up the total uh, that's driving up the total value for that mark. So, as we can see here, chairs uh, have a high number of records, probably because you're buying individual chairs, not just a whole table. So there's going to be multiple records that could be driving up the overall sales for that value. Much the same, uh, there is average value for each of the marks inside of a visual, inside of a, um, the average value for each mark. So. Uh, if there's a high sales or profit value, maybe it's because something like Canon printers are expensive, more expensive than something like pencils inside of an office supply store, yeah. right? So that could be what's causing your value of the mark to be much higher or different from everything else. So, so far we discussed explained data and how it analyzes uh, all of the records that make up each mark. It's going to be looking for those extreme values. It's going to be seeing if there is a high number of records that could be causing the, the total value to be much higher than expected, or maybe the individual average of each of the values is higher than expected. Another model that explained data will run is similar to what William was showing before. What are the other fields in the data set that can be explaining this higher than expected, uh, the higher than expected distribution. So, as William showed, uh, going out with friends is not something we were looking at. We were looking at, uh, we were looking at the scores for all of the students aggregated together. But going out with friends seems to have a high influence, a statistical influence on 
the value of that of in each of the student's scores. All right, so we're going to carry on and say how and explain how you can awesome. harness explain data in some of your use cases. Yeah, thanks, Nick. So with this, we're going to start talking about a little bit on the setting up your data for success. So while Nick has just gone through exactly kind of what the end results are going to be and maybe how to interpret them, we want to make sure that you guys understand exactly why you may be setting up your data, maybe in a slightly different way than what you would do for a dashboard. And the reason why is because explained data, as you've probably seen, is for analytical, for that analytical journey, is for that exploration. So as we do that ad hoc analysis, we're asking lots of questions of our data very, very quickly. And so what we want are wider data sets. To get back to our panning for gold, the more columns that explain data has, the broader that search can be. So if we have a team bigger than um, what we had originally, if Nick's out in the river with a single pan, if we have more people panning or churning up the dirt, we probably can actually figure out you know, where those insights are faster. And it's going to help you provide more useful explanations because we are adding in the context around what a single value is. Next, we want to make this data more consumable. As we saw earlier, we had that one to five scale. That could be a lot of different things. That could be a rank, that could be good to bad. It could, mean, it could be an ID. It may have no true value. And so we want to make sure that your end users don't find fool's gold. We want to make sure that they find gold values that are truly valuable. So when I see that one to five, I might assume it's a rank and not have that right insight and action to take. So we want clear, descriptive columns uh, so people understand exactly what these fields are, but then also clear and descriptive field names. If we're very ID heavy, that means that we are probably going to have one, lots of different values, but also values that may not make sense to our end users. Again, one to five, what does that actually mean? Having that description, using an alias in Tableau, you can actually change these values from one to five to good to bad, and that would be something that would help that end user with their understanding. Next, while we want wider data sets, we don't want to muddy the waters. And what I mean there is we don't want to have redundant or irrelevant columns. Again, the width, we need to have context around exactly what this data point means. If it is completely irrelevant to our analysis that we're looking to do, it's not going to be helpful. And redundant columns can add confusion, but also excess queries and excess explanations, making that end user experience not as optimal. Lastly, we want low cardinality. And by that, I mean that we want columns with fewer unique values. And again, this is on the consumption side. We've seen it already multiple times. That window, that dialog box that pops up from explain data, it's pretty small. And if you're going to display a value that has you know, 50 or more unique items, it's really hard to fully understand exactly what that is going to mean. We have to open that up into another view. But if we think high level, such as Boolean values, you know, true, false, Likert scale, one to five, or categorical values like we're seeing on the right, then we can show that value, have someone drill in with that exploratory tool, and, and go to that next level faster. So, to demo some of these, we're going to get back into Tableau. And we're going to start off here with a visualization that comes from a data set that you all are probably pretty familiar with, Superstore. This is the average profit value for items that are discounted from zero to 85%. And right now, you might notice that a lot of the data columns that we have are missing. And that is because this is what we consider just a fact table. This is going to be really just that base level information of a transaction. We have the values that matter, our sales, quantity, discount, and profit, but we don't have that additional context around what that is. You can see we have some IDs or keys to join this in and pull that in. But if we try to work with narrow data like this, as I look to get an explanation, on maybe a value that I don't find as, or that I find interesting, we see that we get no explanation. Now, sometimes this is fine. 
Sometimes having no explanation is completely legitimate. But in this case, there's a lot of additional context that we can add in around this data to start to help encourage the models to be built out, built out in a more complex way. So, if we go back to our data source and look at adding in additional values, such as product, you can see that we can join that in based off of product key. And as we go back to our view, we can come to that same visualization, have the additional context of what these products are. We see that we now have product category as an explanation. There are no objects, there's no products in the office supply space that are being discounted at this rate. And we can see specifically, there are lots of products that are discounted at this rate in that copier area. Maybe, what Nick talked about earlier, those copiers are really expensive. Maybe we are discounting at a rate, but our margins are really high there too. Maybe this is something we should look into. As we continue to add in additional context around the priority of the orders, where the orders were purchased, when the orders were purchased, we can build out the schema to be a lot more complex. But in doing so, we're adding all of this context around what is a purchase and what could potentially go into explaining why this mark is different than all of the rest. So as we go back to our visualization, we can go in, select that same mark, and get an explanation. And continue to get further insight into what's going on here. We see the key factors are again, what's being purchased, but also where. So that's just for this mark. But maybe we look at something else. Maybe I expected this trend to be a little more linear, so I want to, uh, with that profit um, being higher. So maybe I wanted to be call out something in this range. As I make this selection, we also see similar trends. Again, Tableau is not going to pull in these like fields. Um, we're seeing that you know region, country, these are all you know location based. That's where us as analysts need to make that decision. But also, we see things, you know, again, the value is going to be important, but we see things like this, where market is actually showing up multiple times. And this can be confusing. So in this case, we have market here, where it has the kind of human consumption element, where it's shown as Africa, APAC, Canada, et cetera. But we also are getting a second uh, explanation, that is market and just the keys that are tied to market, one to seven. Now this is a unique identifier, Again, it's more for computer consumption rather than human consumption. So as an end user, we're, we are creating multiple queries and potentially confusing someone uh, to understand why these are also both showing up. So what we can do is we can use Tableau to actually reduce those queries and take out unnecessary things, such as these keys. Again, if we don't have data that is going to be relevant to our analysts and people using this tool, we should remove it, reduce the query load, and improve that experience. So as we hide these, that is actually going to remove it from all possible queries within Tableau. So as I go back, this also reigns true for explained data. And when I do that same uh, individual mark, we see that market still is displayed, but we don't have those repetitive values of market key. So the big takeaway from this is we want to make sure that you build out a data set that has all the context around what a value is when it comes to um, building a model and building, doing this type of further analysis. Anything that could affect, affect that, in this case, profitability, we want to make sure that we have that in the context of this data set to potentially get an explanation to drive us further. With that, we have one more little tip from Nick here. All right. And we'll continue on. Great. It's up on the screen, perfect. So, data granularity. Uh, we discussed these marks. When you click on a mark on a visualization, uh, there could be multiple records of data underneath that mark, or there could just be one record. So data granularity is going to be important for understanding and getting context uh, behind each of these different marks and giving explained data values to analyze. So 
I'm going to show a few different examples here of different data granularity and how that affects the results for explained data. In this first example, we can see that we have all of our customers and the sales and profit for, for each. And we are looking at the level of detail in the marks card of customer and market. So when I highlight over top of this customer here, we can see that uh, they're in the US market and they made 12 purchases in this market. I'm going to select this mark and go to explain data. It takes a few minutes for these models to run. As William mentioned, it's going to be helpful to eliminate any uh, fields in your data set that could be redundant, reducing those query times. Now, because we have this customer's historical purchases in this data set, uh, when we select this mark, we can see that this customer made a purchase that was an extreme value, much higher than was expected. So we can see that is one explanation that was provided because we have each of this customer's historical purchases in this data set. So that extreme value, that's a single purchase, right, Nick? Yes, it's going to be a single purchase, okay. a single transaction, uh, where this customer made a, a larger than typical purchase, and we actually were very profitable on that purchase. Maybe it's a typo or something else, but it helps to explain why that data point was such an outlier. So we're going to switch here, and it's going to be the same visualization, but now when I highlight over this data point, we can see that there is one record as displayed in uh, the as displayed in the in the uh, in the tooltip here. So when I select that mark and use explain data here, we can see we're going to get a much different explanation. Really, this explanation is saying, hey, this av it's average profit, it's higher than expected, but we can't get down to those transaction levels that were available uh, in the last analysis. So this is now looking at just the total value of a single customer, and a business might do this for performance reasons, for, for what? Yeah, performance reasons typically. Typically we're going to aggregate, uh, businesses may aggregate data to the customer level, um, that you know that way it's it's quicker to transact uh, or or display the dashboard uh, on Tableau server. All right, one more example here, very similar data set, uh, and in this instance again we are going to be aggregating by customer, um, but when I select a particular country here, and use explain data. Uh, we can see that there are a couple of possible explanations. Uh, the, there is the, uh, most of these sales came from the EMEA market. I selected Turkey. That's to be expected. But again, we have that single extreme value, which is going to be showing that customer's uh, historical sales. This data set was aggregated to the customer level. That is the level of detail. Uh, and we can see that one particular customer we were extremely uh, unprofitable on, uh, where the normal for this particular country was much higher. So this is now looking at that one customer skewing all of Turkey rather than a single purchase skewed Turkey. Exactly. So we're, depending on how we aggregate, we can get different explanations. And I guess the main takeaway would just be make sure you're end users and you understand exactly what granularity of data you're working with so that when you get an, a value like this for an extreme value, you understand what that extreme value is made of and what that means. So next up, we're going to discuss some tips and tricks as you're exploring your data. So it's important that you select a single mark. Uh, Explain Data is going to analyze this mark against all the other marks in a visualization and use all those tests that I mentioned. It's going to be looking, is there an extreme value? Is the profit, or, or is, is there uh, a higher than expected average value for each of these marks? 
uh, or perhaps there is a dimension that could be affecting this mark being different from the others. It's important to consider your data volumes. Is it billions of records that you're analyzing, or millions, or just maybe thousands? This, the data volumes is going to affect the speed that explained data displays the results, um, because it needs to analyze all of the records in that data set and compare that with all of the columns. So as William was mentioning earlier, it may be a good idea to eliminate redundant uh, or irrelevant columns when you're using explained data to analyze. Uh, but also, when it spins for a little bit, think about what you would do to ask all of those questions normally in Tableau. So sometimes you make that simple click and you expect it to be lightning fast. If it spins for a minute because you are working with a large data set, again, think about all the questions that Tableau is asking and the expectation of that model that it's building and that the end result to try to get to that same thing that we showed earlier. What's the difference of you doing this manually or using a system that's going to be trusted and relevant to the analysis you're trying to do? And we're going to be working with a single data source. So blends are not supported with explained data, but no worries. With, with Tableau Prep, you can aggregate your data and join it in. So your data preparation steps are going to be a little bit different uh, from what you may be doing when you're building a dashboard uh, for reporting purposes. Right? You may be leaving in a, a few more fields, uh, or you may be aggregating data in, uh, in an ETL tool or at the, at the data source layer, and, or using Tableau Prep to aggregate data so it can be blended or joined in, right? And as we saw today, there's some really cool features coming down the pipe in, in prep data to help with those different aggregations and different data sets. Really, really neat. Great. Let's continue on with some key takeaways. William, why don't you take us away? Awesome, thanks. So for key takeaways, explain data, again, new in 2019.3. So if you're not on 2019.3, make sure you upgrade so you can start leveraging this amazing new feature. We want to make sure that you guys are thinking beyond the dashboard. This is a tool that is really good for that ad hoc analysis. But also, it is something that can be used on a dashboard. So when you think about those end users who are going to be looking at your dashboard, maybe going into that explore web edit capability, they can use it there as well. So we want to make sure that this is something that continues to strengthen your analysis before you build that dashboard, but also something that can help someone ask additional questions beyond that dashboard. And include any data that could be relevant. As we've talked about throughout this whole conversation, we're really thinking about what is the context of a data point and what makes up something that is going to be relevant to uh, this data as a whole. So again, when we think about the dashboard going beyond that dashboard, if we're enabling people to actually ask questions beyond that dashboard, the data set feeding that dashboard will also have to uh, contain all of that context around the dashboard itself. So if you guys are looking to learn more about Explain Data, here are some also related sh sessions from hands-on training that really get, gets you guys using it uh, and exploring with some different data sets, but also getting into the actual statistics behind it. Um, we were really talking about how do you set yourself up for success. The dev teams, <laughs> they're the ones who built it, they're the smarter people, and they're going to tell you exactly what's going on there uh, on that session tomorrow. And then, yeah, and then lastly, we would really appreciate it if you guys did fill out a survey, go to your app, um, come rate us. We're here looking to improve always. We're a data-driven company, so all of that data is going to help us uh, continue to get better for next year and beyond. So thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful. And if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to just come up to us afterwards. And we're not going to do an open uh, session just because of the noise here is kind of crazy. Um, but thank you so much, and hope, happy uh, data exploring. Hey, thanks everyone.